My name is Nate. I am the author of Sidekick in Practice, how to scale your sidekick from zero to 10,000 jobs per second. And I'm talking to Kelly Sutton from Gusto. Uh, Kelly and I have worked together for the last six months now um, at Gusto. Myself as a contractor, Kelly has been there since I think the dawn of time. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it's been really cool to watch uh, what Kelly's been doing because the whole time that I've been there, although uh, not the whole time that Kelly's been there. He's been working on this background job team. So uh, as I was working on Psychic in Practice, I kind of got to see what somebody who was deploying responsible for a Psychic installation at scale uh, was doing. And, um, you know, we got, we had, I think, a lot of good back and forth and a lot of learning both ways. And um, I thought it'd be great to, to talk to Kelly on uh in this format because psychic in practice um is really focused on scaling from the technical perspective but uh, i think a lot of what you've had to do kelly has been scaling the organization <laughs> and uh scaling the the human perspective and creating interfaces that people can use and and uh and not mess up other people's jobs <laughs> um so uh, i thought it'd be a really great conversation to uh to have so Thanks for uh, taking the time, Kelly. Glad to be here, Nate. Thanks for thanks for having me. So, could you t talk a little bit about like how how long you've been at Gusto? Sure. How did the and like what's like your background as like a programmer? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been at Gusto. I just hit my five year anniversary actually. So that's like for me, that's like a long time at a company. I think in tech, that is like since the Stone Age. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've been here for. Well, and then I put it like this. I've been here for half the life of the company. Um, oh, okay, so that's a long time. So before <laughs> before Gusto, uh, I had worked at like a smattering of like other startups. And then I'd also tried to create a company myself. We were trying to be, uh, call it like a GitHub for uh, designers. Um, so that didn't that didn't pan out, but uh, made, made a lot of like friends and uh, colleagues for life, I would say, and uh, learned a lot in the process as well. Um, so I've been using Sidekick for close to like a decade. And actually, I, like I remember the, it, it definitely wasn't me that came up with the idea, but uh, I think the first employee of our company, Layer Vault, was like, hey, we're using delayed job, which is an old gem that uses the database for like the queuing um, and working mechanism. Uh, why don't we switch to this thing called Sidekick? And so that's probably 2012, 2013. Um, and so I've been using another ever since, and I've worked in other languages other than Ruby. And every time I'm working in a language that is not Ruby, I wish I had Sidekick. Um, and then a little bit about background about Gusto. It's, uh, if you haven't covered it already, payroll benefits and HR software for small businesses in the US. Um, hopefully some, some folks watching this video are paid through Gusto. Um, what are the public numbers that we say these days? Yeah, I mean, uh, so, we... so, so like Gusto basically moves all of its payroll through Sidekick at some point, right? Yeah. And yeah. Gusto is now a really big company, like uh, however many thousand employees that work there and however yeah. many bajillion companies that use Gusto. So it's it's huge. And like yeah. it basically runs on Sidekick. We, we, we uh, yeah, so I like to measure the number of basis points that goes through Sidekick. Uh, basis points of the US GDP that goes through that sidekick. And it's, I don't know, I don't know it's like 10 or something like that, like that now. So 0.1% of the US GDP goes through sidekick. So and that's, uh, that's on, that's on my team to make sure that that happens. <laughs> Just like the Atlas, like, Just, like yeah, underneath the earth of the US economy is <laughs> sitting right here, folks. Side, sidekick. Um, <laughs> so this background jobs team at Gusto is kind of new. So how did that, mm -hmm. how did that come about? And what was the, mm -hmm. what was the impetus for that? Yeah. So, um, where does this story start? So our background jobs effort was born out of some cost cutting efforts that we were doing kind of in response to COVID when every business, I think on the planet was trying to, uh, become more aware of their costs. So we noticed some things in how our sidekick instances were configured that uh, uh, the costs, the important thing there was the costs were scaling faster than the traffic on them. So 
uh, you know, for every, like the math would just work out. So like, so for every, it wasn't this egregious, but effectively like for every one customer that we added, we'd had, we would have to add like two machines, two sidekick machines to handle it. Mm. Um, and so if you projected things out, like the, uh, uh, how much money we were giving Amazon, not necessarily just Mike, but Amazon for the purposes of running Sidekick uh, would eventually dominate our entire IT budget like by the end of next year. Um, and so when you see something like that, something that scales super, super linearly with your customer count, um, time to get to work. So uh, we started to reevaluate how we had Sidekick set up. Um, and we wanted to change the trade-off that we had made a few years earlier so that uh, some of the trade-offs that we were making a few years earlier to tamp down on costs, but also create a single team responsible for the operation of Sidekick. So. And that, that reason for that super linear cost scaling, I think was pretty much due to the structure that existed at Gusto for how, how teams were responsible for working with Sidekick, right? And how, yeah. how, how they were responsible for cues in Sidekick. Yeah. So what, what, was that, what was that situation like before, before you started on this? Yeah, so we, we were asking each team to kind of run their own Sidekick machines basically. And, and, and we gave them the tools to do so. Um, but as like the number of engineers working at Gusto increased, so too did the number of teams. So uh, rather than just like a typical, like, you know, critical default low sidekick queues, right? That you might see, or like, uh, like you mentioned in the book, uh, you would see like team A critical, team B or team A default, team A low. Um, and then multiply that for the like dozens and dozens of teams. Um, and then if you just look at like pure utilization, right? Uh, most of the time, none of none of that capacity is being used yeah um, yeah it's funny and, it's a little yeah. bit like i always use the grocery store example when i talk about like oh this is a queuing system like yep. go to the grocery store and uh which would you rather have would you rather go to trader joe's where it's one queue and 10 checkout counters pulling from the queue or would mm -hmm. you rather go to you know walmart where it's uh 10 checkout counters and 10 different queues and you can get stuck behind somebody who's paying with a check or whatever and yep. What what actually happens in like most psychic installs is you get the 10 Q, 10 checkout counter situation with this like Q explosion. But the problem is not that people are getting stuck in buying like big jobs or in, in, in queues, but that nine out of the 10 checkout counters are sitting there twiddling their thumbs, yeah. <laughs> you know, for yeah. 23 hours of the day. And yeah. it, that seems especially true at, 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 at Gusto at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it, it was still like a pretty savvy decision to make at the time because it, it allowed us to delay the decision that we ended up making until it made financial sense, hmm. right? So although we did have like team A critical, team A default, team A low, we didn't have to have like a, a background jobs team, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you, were, you were trading the, I don't know if you want to call it agility, but like removing a blocker there. But you're just like, okay, this is what we do. You create another queue, you create another uh a deployment and yeah. you're done yeah and you and your your team is responsible for for running mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah but uh uh yeah and then once once like the cost like the cost perspective became clearer we didn't quite understand how that would affect cost but once the cost and some of like the operational aspects of that like every team gets their own kingdom uh, became clearer, like then the math started to make sense. Like, okay, we could actually put a, put together a small team here. It'll pay for itself and the uh, developer and, and end user experience is gonna improve in the process. So, so what have you been doing? What yeah. have you been doing since um, this team was actually established? So uh, I think the, the one thing or the one breakthrough for me uh, and I guess like the, the folks uh, on our team at the company has been to uh, take every single job and ask, when does this job need to be picked up by? Or, or in the book, you call it wait time. Like, what is the maximum allowable wait time for this job? Um, that has been, that, that's been like the, the, the 
critical breakthrough for us that's allowed us to consolidate a lot of this infrastructure, a lot of the upgrades to Sidekick Pro and Sidekick Enterprise has allowed this move to be safe, right? Like Sidekick Pro didn't get poison pill prevention until version 5.2.4 or something like that. And so we were on an earlier version of Sidekick Pro. So like there was also a like safety reason why each team operated in its own kingdom. Um, so by having each team basically say like, okay, this job needs to run like right away, right away for us is within 30 seconds or within the next five minutes, next hour, next 24 hours. Um, that's allowed us to, uh, depending on how you want to say it, like treat our jobs more like cattle and less like pets. Meaning so like the, if, if, if a queue is having a problem, we don't need to understand every single job in that queue as people running like the shared infrastructure. We just say, is the queue meeting its SLA? What is its SLA? Its SLA is its name. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's really interesting. I actually never thought about it that way, that it's like a, for somebody like you who looks at the queue and says, oh, this job is, you know, sitting in there. You, you've never seen that job class before. No. You don't know what it does. Yeah. You don't know if it's important, but you do know that somebody signed up and said, all right, uh, and we should probably talk about some of the systems of the queues you've got, but yeah. they, they, they signed up for a queue uh, within five minutes and yeah. it's been six minutes. So yeah. uh, we got a problem here and you don't yeah. have to know anything else. They, they, they told you what they wanted and you're not delivering it. So that's, that's the problem there. You didn't have to yeah. call anybody up and say, what is yep. this job doing? Or, or they, they probably in that case, they would have called you and been like, Hey, uh, <laughs> this thing that we thought was going to execute quickly is not right. Yeah. 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 And, and it also lets us like be programmatic about like, okay, we can create an alert because that, yeah. that, that queue latency is above five minutes. Um, and also programmatic about who we reach out to, right? Basically anyone who has a job in this queue, mm -hmm. like they need to know. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, a lot of, and the stuff is like, it's all like, you know, we're just humans applying labels to this. So five minutes and six minutes, probably effectively the same, right? Like, so a lot of times, like the five minute queue will exceed its SLA, we'll, we'll, we'll tr trigger an alert, we'll let the teams know. And the teams will be like, eh, as long as it's done by like, I don't know, within an hour, that's fine. Hmm. Um, or like, eh, 15 minutes is fine. And we don't have like a 15 minute queue. So this is just like, the, the this is just the, uh, the downsides of having like really strict buckets here is, they're they're they give you the illusion of precision right and so that's what that's what cues the ones that i would say the system that you're moving to at gusto that's what cues mm -hmm. look like now they look like yeah. names of latency expectations yeah yeah and then we're um you know we've got thousands of jobs but we're as we're recording this episode we're basically halfway done but most of the volume uh that gusto does in sidekick is running on these like um uh these like uh latency based cues uh or like sla based cues sla based cues um so the the concept i would say is pretty de-risked here yeah. Um, yeah yeah and um something that i i really only mention in passing in psychic and practice is this idea that i got from you of a read-only queue of a mm -hmm. queue that pulls or i should say talks only to the read replica of yep. the primary SQL database. Where yep. did that idea come from and what has it done for you, Augusta? Yeah, so the idea of read-only queues uh, came from a problem that we were experiencing, which you touch on in the book or allude to in the book, which is um, uh, Sidekick was too fast for our database. <laughs> you know, this is actually a great tie-in to the conversation <laughs> I had with Mike in the yeah. previous video, which is that we talked about, I asked him, you know, what are the problems that people come to you with Sidekick? And then we had a conversation and it was like, wait, so the problem that most people have with Sidekick is that it's too fast. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that really does kind of I mean, lead to not just this problem, but a lot of different ones anyway. Um, yeah. I'll let you keep going. Well, well, I mean, like, like, like Sidekick is mind blowingly fast. I would say <laughs> in that, in that, like it, it like, and, and and that kind of manifests as like sharp edges in Sidekick, which is like the mm -hmm. the callback issue. If you put if you enqueue a Sidekick job, and then after save callback, that will cause cause you an issue because 
that job is going to get picked up before that database transaction closes. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is, that is just like wild. And that's like a new, that's like, whoa, holy crap. Like I didn't know it could, I didn't know Ruby, anything in Ruby could be that fast. So as a, as a Rubyist at heart, that makes me very happy. Um, so the problem that we were having that led us to read only queues was, um, uh, too much concurrency, too much sidekick concurrency. So sidekick was picking up jobs at concurrency levels that we had defined. Um, and this is like the old style queues, but the, the queues themselves were not um, uniform in work, right? So there'd be you know 10 or 20 different types of jobs onto a single queue. So some of those jobs would be safe to run at like concurrency 100, let's say. Uh, others would tank the database, right? Um, and uh, we'd also had a, so that was piece one of kind of like the, the problem. Piece two was we'd had this reader replica sitting around that we, it was really hard to get folks to opt into. Um, and we'd recently upgraded to Rails 6. So there's like really nice primitives um, in the framework now for selecting databases. Um, but still like we just had this like thing that was sitting around that was useful for us because it gives us some uh, redundancy, but largely unused. Um, and so those are kind of like the two problems. So like Sidekick was too fast um, or, or too concurrent. And then we had a reader replica that we weren't really using. Um, so the idea was like, well, what if we uh, created, uh, what if we marked jobs as read-only? Meaning they're just reading information out of the database. Um, and doing something with it, either putting it in Redis, communicating with third party, something that is not putting it back in the database that it's reading out of. Um, and we reasoned through it and we said like, well, the read replica by definition has almost nothing connecting to it right now. So you get the whole database to yourself. Um, and because it's read only, we also know that that, that is unlikely to tax the database in the ways that we had, had seen it taxing the database. So uh, rather than like limiting us artificially to some concurrency level, like, you know, uh, 25, uh, 25 sidekick threads or a hundred sidekick threads, we could just like let it rip. We could like- Yeah, you, you can't really the, do- the question, You can't do a lot of damage with uh, a read-only database connection, can you? Like- Yeah, you exactly. Can't, you can't, you can't, you know, uh, drop 5,000 inserts uh, per second. You, you can't do all sorts of crazy stuff. So like, yeah, I mean, let them loose. Yeah, and so so we've done that. And, and so now like the, like the uh, that's almost entirely fixed the problem that we were having with our primary where mm -hmm. we just don't see Sidekick nuking it. Um, workloads that's that so used to take- so easy to do too, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so easy with coaching. Sidekick to just be yeah. like, all right, uh, here's 500,000 jobs and then your database just like explodes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's yeah, it's so easy to nuke it and we've made it very easy to make the change. It's a, it's a one line change. So um, yeah, and then since then like workloads that used to take like a day, take like an hour. Um, and then, so we're starting to get into those like order of magnitude gains where people assumed stuff was impossible. And now that it's possible, like it starts to get really exciting. It's like, oh, we just thought that job was going to take three hours forever mm. right? and maybe scale linearly with customer growth. Mm. It's like, oh no, now this, now this takes 10 seconds. Like mm. we can do some really cool stuff with that. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's been like another nice breakthrough for us is understanding how sidekick is like a nice uh, pivot point or like hook point for read replicate usage. Mm. Um, and another thing that you did that's quite near and dear to my heart is you, you killed the smear. You yeah. disallowed smearing at Gusto. <laughs> so we should talk about what that is and like why, why, what led you to that decision? How did you enforce it? And what, what have you yeah. gained from that? So yeah. maybe we could, just, so smearing is just the, this practice of taking a given workload, usually quite like a large number of jobs and using perform at to try to enqueue that load over some period of time in the future. So mm -hmm. rather than dumping 500,000 jobs at once, you dump 10,000 per second for the next 550 seconds or whatever. Yeah. And the idea there is again, to prevent this like sharp edge of sidekick of like, it's too fast, right? Yeah. Like we're, <laughs> we're dumping too much on, on, onto our sidekick uh, 
set up at once, which causes problems. So why don't we just enqueue this load over the future and mm -hmm. then we won't have this problem. So yep. what, what led you to want to get rid of that at Gusto? Because people don't believe me when I say this. People don't believe mm -hmm. me when I tell them this isn't a scalable practice. So like what, what yeah. led you to this? How, and what, what, have, what have you gotten out of it? How did you enforce it? Yeah, so I would, I would, I would actually say like this is this is a this is a big bigger or growing company problem, right? For mm. for small folks who are just getting started, with sidekick smear to your heart's content, mm. right? Um, reason why we are moving away from it is a fewfold. One is that it makes it really difficult, or it's it's I would say it's just incompatible with our like um, with our SLA based cues, like within thirty seconds, mm -hmm. just due to how sidekick works under the hood, right? Um, we can't get an accurate view of latency, nor how much work uh, are we expecting to do in this queue over this, you know, two-hour period, three-hour period, whatever like that smear period is, because it's not actually in the queue; it's in a different part of Sidekick. Yeah, what, one the thing we should set. say is that you have this approach where you can look at a queue and look at how fast you're draining it, right? And you've got yeah. ten thousand jobs in the queue; mm -hmm. you're taking two hundred off per second. You know that you can make an estimate that oh, that means that this queue will take another hour for us to, yeah. to dig through, right? Which yeah. when you have a one hour, 24 hour SLA, then you can then you can get woken up early. You can say, yeah. oh, well, this this is definitely not gonna work. So we need to fix this now <laughs> rather than 22 hours from now when our 24 yeah. hour SLA goes off. Yeah, and we have 22 hours to fix it. Um, yeah, yeah, don't sell yourself short. You were, you were the person that set that up in all of our, in all of our <laughs> cases, so uh, yeah. Um, uh okay so so smearing was incompatible with this idea of like okay when does this job need to be executed by um and just getting like a, a picture in terms of like the how sidekick thinks about work of how much work do we need to do um, it's also i would say getting into that idea it one of the things that i thought was so cool about your background job approach is that you've positioned yourself as um and we can maybe talk about this more, like you're creating a product for consumption yeah. by yeah. the rest of the engineers at Gusto. And yeah. when uh, smearing sort of violates that principle, it's asking mm -hmm. the, the caller, the engineer writing the, please perform this job mm -hmm. to say, hmm, like how, how many jobs can I enqueue per second here? Like, what is, what is too much? Like, yeah. And it's, they're making this capacity planning decision at the uh, call site yeah. when the whole point of this initiative is, hey, we'll take care of that. Just put it on yeah. there. Tell us, tell us what you need to buy and we'll get it done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and we'll, we'll get in touch if like you give us 25 yeah. hours of work on the 24 hour queue. Like we'll yeah, be like, yeah, yeah. hey, yeah. can't yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a, that's a different problem. That's like the that's like a and we actually don't reject that work. We just work around it and then have a conversation. Um, yeah. Yeah afterwards so uh and then so number one incompatible with like these new like ideas that we were exploring uh point number two it actually it, it's a good enough approach for spreading out load but it's not a bulletproof one and so when you're dealing with as much money as we are when you have as many customers as we do like the the good enough approaches or the things that are fine 90 percent of the time or even 99 percent of the time quickly become not okay um, so what's a scenario where smearing won't actually smear your jobs? Um, it's if the queue that the smeared work is going into, like you probably can't dive into exactly all of the details here, but when you perform that, it's going to go into whatever queue that it normally goes in, let's just call it default. Right? But it's not actually in the default queue, it's in the scheduled set, but a part of Sidekick scoops up that work and puts it into the default queue um, at a regular interval. Uh, but if that default queue is full, right, or even just non-zero, uh, that work that you've said perform in five minutes from now or perform at 5 p.m. exactly, it just goes into the queue. Right. It doesn't actually <laughs> start to execute at 5 p.m. Right, right, right. You're scheduling um, it to be put in the queue at a time. You're, you're scheduling, scheduling it to be put in the queue at 5 p.m. Executed, yeah. Right. And so if that queue has a lot of work, right, in, you know, in the most de degenerate case where that queue is super full, and you smear you take great care to smear all of this work over the five hours but that queue has six hours of work in it you're just going to put five hours of work that you didn't know about 
on top of that six hours of work. Uh, surprise! Surprise! Yeah, and so and so it 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 gets into like one of these like nasty situations that are kind of like you know common in 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 large complex systems where uh, you know little band aids or like quick fixes or good enough fixes actually end up contributing to some pretty nasty problems, which is it's if that queue is that backed up it's really bad to start getting surprised with how much work is getting loaded onto it right <laughs> yeah. like, the, like the, the holes just getting bigger so um uh yeah so we say no smearing let us handle it if you give us too much work we won't block folks uh, we haven't gotten to the point where we're actually like blocking folks like a third party might uh or like a true third party might um, like, like load but, shedding like telling people like, like yeah like load shedding or rate limiting um but it is like the start of a conversation right mm -hmm. um and, and that becomes like a conversation point of like hey uh you know we have finite resources by design you gave us more than we could handle we still got it done but we had to surge a little bit we had to do something unsafe or we had to get woken up in the middle of the night whatever it is but that's the that's the start of the conversation um, did you ever have problems with just like the sheer size of the scheduled set like did you have people trying to like walk through the scheduled set through sidekick api and like you know walking through millions of jobs and and doing crazy redis commands or did the size of the scheduled set and like the 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 prevalence of that pattern ever bite you really uh not that we've been able to not that we were able to detect at the time but our like knowledge of like the sidekick internals were probably pretty limited at the time as well mm -hmm. So there might have been problems or something might have been taking longer than we thought it should and we didn't know why, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, and I think you've, you've mentioned this in like a few tweets, like the, the, the queues under the hood use the Redis list um, data structure, which has a lot of like uh, constant time operations. The scheduled set uses the sorted set uh, Redis uh, data structure under the hood, which a lot of operations there are not constant time. So when you do start loading in a bunch of work into the scheduled set, um, I would expect things are not going to work like a queue. Yeah, or things yeah. are not going to work like a sidekick queue. I, I think that right. would might be like a, a reaction to somebody who doesn't understand how scheduled sets implemented to yeah. the scenario that you described there is like, well, can't you just look at the scheduled set and mm -hmm. look at what's in there to, to say, oh, well, I've got something of this that's going to be dumped on me in an hour. But the problem mm -hmm. is, is that all those, all those commands looking through yes. that whole scheduled set would just be yeah. beyond expensive, especially if you're using that pattern a lot. The more you use the pattern, the more expensive it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I'm, uh, yeah, whether you're even, well, yeah, like, so like scanning the set, scheduled set, that has to be a, a, a linear time operation, big O of N, right? So if you've got a million things in there, right, you're, you're scanning over a million items in the list and, and then you start thinking like well maybe i should only do this like once a minute or once every five minutes and then you've like already lost because then that <laughs> that's like the smallest resolution that you could possibly get an answer back and you're going to get bitten where you know n equals four minutes you you queried it but a whole workload showed up at n equals five minutes and then uh, your system thought it was okay but it got, got destroyed and and hopefully uh, all like what the listener is taking away from this is well, that sounds awfully complicated. I'm not going to do that. Because yeah, exactly. As soon as you're like dealing with all, as soon as you're like digging this hole, like uh, uh, you're, you're, uh, I can all but guarantee you're only going to get surprised operationally. Yeah. yeah. So this, this new approach of the, the latency based cues, uh, have you seen impacts on costs and efficiency in terms of resources since since that approach has been adopted the whole reason you you know maybe got interested in the first place yeah so um we're we're halfway done right now but the the cost savings are already starting to to manifest so that's that's a great sign um uh and they're manifesting in the sense that you're you're taking infrastructure that was set up to consume you know these hundreds of queues that existed before yeah. and those that infrastructure can just be wound down now like exactly you, you've got a much smaller number of queues and mm -hmm. what i call like a process type which is just a process that pulls from a particular queue you've got yeah. you're 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 decreasing both of those numbers exactly and the, exactly. the stuff that does exist is more utilized than the stuff that existed before 
Yeah, yeah. So whereas we needed like kind of ten machines to process, you know, ten different workloads, all those workloads are happening on the same queue safely um, with two machines. Um, uh, and it's like a it's a long process. We're talking about touching every single Sidekick job um, at the company here. Uh, so it takes it takes a while, but each each job kind of needs to uh, be considered. So um, yeah, when like linear like linear incremental progress toward cost reduction is great though so um, um so if i'm a, an engineer at gusto now and mm -hmm. i'm writing a new psychic psychic job what does that look yeah. like for me so maybe the most surprising thing is that uh, when you go to type include sidekick worker uh rubicop will yell at you saying including sidekick worker is deprecated um which uh should surprise you if you know that Gusto uses Sidekick to move, you know, 0.1% of the US GDP. You're like, wait, I thought we used Sidekick here. Um, so we've got a little uh, interface on top of on top of that. So instead of including Sidekick, um, you in, you include uh, one of our like custom worker classes, and the worker class is the thing that uh, handles which queue you go on, and then also your SLA. Um, so uh, end users of our of our products or other developers don't actually type in sidekick options queue within 30 seconds. Um, that's all handled by just including a module. So they'll, they'll include like Gusto workers within 30 seconds and that gives them a 30 second SLA. Um, what, have you, what have you learned since starting on this background job team path? Was there something mm -hmm. that you started off thinking that such and such was going to happen, and now, oh, that doesn't work, or uh, something that you didn't expect. So when we, uh, well, one just a general like appreciation, like uh, love for I think what Mike has created, like it's just remarkable. Like just one of the nicest pieces of technology that. Uh, 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 that I get to use with, that I get to interact with. Um, yeah, I agree, hundred uh, percent. Uh, so a new, like a like a newfound appreciation for like Sidekick itself, uh, especially because at this point we know almost the entire source of Sidekick, right? Yeah. And all versions of it. Same. Like we we've, <laughs> we've needed to like really understand and dig in. Like, okay, why does the sorted set do this? Um, and then every single time where you're like, I think I could do this better. And then you like read the source and you're like, nope, he, he, he beat He's me to it. it. <laughs> like four, four years ago, he, he, he got it. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, and then so maybe the most surprising thing was we thought Sidekick was on its last legs at Gusto. Like we yeah, thought you we know, were, I we actually went back and I, I read your original proposal and I was kind of surprised to read that tone in the original mm -hmm. proposal. It was like, it was a little bit like reading almost like a rescue, like, Oh, mm -hmm. this th this thing is dying. Like you know, yeah. we gotta we gotta either fix this or ship it out. Yep, yep. Um, and and then like some of the, like the decisions, right? Like the fact that you include a gusto worker and not a sidekick worker, mm. uh, kind of like we're born from that time as well, where it's like we actually don't know how long we're going to be on sidekick, right? Mm -hmm. um, but given our progress so far, given like the natural adoption at Gusto, of people people want to switch their stuff to these new like SLA based queues. Um, and, and given how much we've been able to reduce infrastructure spends, uh, you know, our, our, our runway went from like, I don't know, 12, let's call it like 12 to 24 months to like, maybe never, right? Maybe never is like five plus years. At, <laughs> yeah, at a company like Gusto. Like at, at a company like Gusto, years, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so that's great just because, you know, having touched half of, or, or, or my, my team has touched half of all the psychic workers at the company, it takes a long time. Um, so switching off of psychic would be, it would be a gigantic lift. Um, and it's something that we probably won't have to do for another, um, uh, you know, well, I, I actually don't know. I, I don't know. Right. Like all, all like the limits that we were looking at, like Redis memory, uh, job throughput, uh, uh, job safety against like noisy neighbor problems, so that team A's job doesn't nuke team B's job. Team B's job. Uh, those are all gone. So, like, just like seeing that runway just extend is is the best for me. So, um, yeah. so now that you're not 
ever going to get rid of sidekick. What other plans do you have? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Now, I mean. now, that, now that you're never, never going to get rid of sidekick and yeah. Mike's financial future is secure until he dies. Yeah. Uh, what, what plans do you have for the future of this team and like for, for what you've got in the, in the backlog? Like, what hmm. are you going to keep doing? Um, so, so every single time, uh, one of our SLA, SLAs gets breached, right? You know, team gives us six minutes of work and puts it in the five minute queue or two hours of work and puts it in our one hour queue. Um, we get paged and we have a, we have a rule on the team that every page requires a, an action or a reaction, right? Reaction can be upgrading the infrastructure, tweaking some settings. The reaction can be pairing with the team to figure out how to get that, that job um, uh, to run in less time, right? Probably send them a copy of Sidekick in Practice. Hey, check this out. Um, uh, so we, we, we do a lot of like continuous learning, right? Um, and we've been doing six months of continuous learning based on current progress, it's gonna be like another like six to nine months before we're done with just converting things to our, our uh, new SLA based workers. So I, I expect there to be plenty of learning there. And then once everything's on it, hopefully the, uh, just the operational overhead of running Sidekick becomes a part-time job um, for an, uh, our infrastructure team. Like right now it's full-time, but uh, over time, you expect the uh, operational burden of known things to decrease. Right? So there will still this, be. The... Look at this guy trying to make himself obsolete. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I get you know. Uh, some people like job security, but you know, a lot of people we just we just get bored. I'm like I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't do this for the second year running. Um, so, uh, uh, but it's it's also remarkable to me that we haven't had any like client side like rate limits yet any like true like you're giving us too much work mm -hmm. um and i actually don't know if we'll ever get there because like the the occurrence of someone actually giving us too much work and it not be already being like a uh like a page worthy incident on their end right like if they're giving us too much work they probably have like some <laughs> infinite loop somewhere and like their customers are going to be unhappy regardless of their sidekick jobs so like uh we're just part of the incident we're not like the, the true cause of it so um yeah we don't need any preventative we don't need any preventative me measures right now um yeah so it's just and then i don't know one day like we might switch off a sidekick we might not probably i mean i don't i don't, I don't see a business case to do so anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. well that was great i think that's kind of where I wanted to get to here. Like, I think you, you're doing such a great job of, of showing how sidekick scales at a large scale organization. I don't think, I don't think you would even think that Gusto has like the largest job jobs per second load of people out there. Uh, but in terms of like company size and complexity and, uh, just the like sheer amount of the business that has to run on the software, I think you're up there. And so um, I hope that this has helped people that's, that are watching this too. If they're going through it now, I've given them a blueprint, but if they're not going through it yet and they're wondering what this looks like when you get bigger, that uh, it's uh, it's possible. It's possible to take care of, possible to do. So okay. um, thank you, Kelly. Uh, you are, are writing a book. You wanna uh, tell us what that uh, is really quick? Yeah. So if you thought that it, Kelly like. was was a smart guy and you want to hear more about him, <laughs> uh, go to my website, Kelly Kelly Uh Yeah, I am I am writing a book slowly about uh, uh, tentative title is Finance for Software Engineers. Basically, how understanding uh, how your organization thinks about and plans its finances, records its finances, uh, can make you a better software engineer because you'll you'll be able to understand things like uh is a hundred thousand dollars important to the company or not uh and then depending on where you're saving that hundred thousand dollars the answer could be yes very or no not at all yeah super uh, useful stuff 
Yeah. Um, and then well, I, I should I should also say one more plug. Uh, we have one spot available on our team at Gusto. So and it is, uh, as I'm recording this, it is October 28, 2021. So yes, uh, uh, act now <laughs> <laughs> or act act soon. So if you uh, <laughs> if if this conversation was interesting and, and someone's made it to the end of this conversation, um, yeah, just drop me drop me a line at, at Gusto and, and we can chat. Uh, Kelly Sutton at Gusto.com. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks and, for having me. Uh, and. Uh, I, I look forward to continuing to work with you at Gusto. Me too.